What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Flow State. This is our first official guest episode, and I'm so excited to have my tour DJ and one of my closest friends on as our first guest, DJ Sir Jazz. A lot of y'all have been asking, you know, how we first linked up. We're going to dive into the history of it. We're going to get to know Jazz a little bit better. We're going to react to a freestyle. I'm going to close it out with some bars. You know what it is, man. Flow State Podcast. Let's go. This is for my Flow State. Yeah. Flow State. Add it. Add it. Yeah. Yeah. Count we back at it. Add it. Ain't it crazy how the mind works magic. Yeah. What's going on, y'all? Welcome to episode two of Flow State. I'm so, so excited to be here with y'all. I'm very excited because this is our first guest episode, and uh, I am thrilled to introduce this person we have with us as our very first guest, the illustrious, the incredible, one of one. One of my favorite people on earth, man. Make some noise, y'all, for my guy, DJ Sir Jay. Let's H-Mac, go. H-Mac, what up, what up, what up? We'll layer some applause in post. We'll add some air horns. <laughs> uh, what's going on, man? How you doing, Jack? Man, I'm feeling good, man. Congratulations on the podcast. Thank you, Thank man. Thank you for having me, man. This place looks phenomenal, by the way. Thank you, bro. Yeah. We're, we're uh, you know, we're getting it set up. We're getting it dialed in. Uh, it feels good. I've been I've been meaning to start this podcast up for a long, long time, but uh, we've been you know traveling all over the place. So it feels good bit. to be yeah. just a little bit. A couple places, a couple places. Just a little bit. <laughs> um, so for those watching who who may not know, uh, Jazz is my tour DJ. We've had the I've had the privilege of being able to do. I don't even know how many shows with you at this point. So, somewhere in the 80s or 90s, it I feels think, like right? It. Yeah, yeah, we're up there. We're, we're getting there. close to 100 if we haven't hit it. But uh, uh, we've had the opportunity to do a lot of shows together. It's been an absolute joy. I want to show people, uh, you know, kind of the chemistry that we bring. So I think we have a, a, a clip queued up. By the way, shout out to Sam behind the scenes, my producer Sam. Sam, how are you feeling? Good, man. What's up, Jim? What up, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, let's see some of you guys' work. Let's get it. trip through the stars. Matter of fact, I take a trip to Mars. Yeah, you gon' trip out, it's gigantic. I'ma take a trip to a whole nother planet. Hell, it's not the top, it's what they telling me. I'm Elton C's, I'm tripping like LSD. H-Mag, grip up on the mic and I'ma bust on. I'ma have you tripping like a magic mushrooms. Everybody knows I got a tripping when I be ripping. You know I take flight just like a pigeon. I'm like an eagle, I rock with my people, my flow is lethal. When it comes to freestyles, I ain't got no equal. Uh, LSD, what I just mentioned. Yeah, y'all know we be in the tension. Uh, matter of fact, tripping like LSD. Tell them really y'all have been the fourth dimension. Uh, <laughs> Come off the top and they call me a rhyme smith. I skip the fourth and I go to the fifth Cause all of my lyrics are timeless h man, I'm breaking the frame At the fans, I be taking aim And I know they be mentioning my rhymes Cause I heard that the fourth dimension was time No time on my clock, I don't even need a rollie And the industry really can control me Yeah, when I use the draw MC mine I can probably even freeze time Matter of fact, we gon' get ill We gon' freeze time, I don't need no quill Everybody right now, don't get hype chill Everybody in the venue, stand still That beat switch though. Yeah, <laughs> okay, bring it back with the motion. Hey. <laughs> oh, damn, Yo. How, how crazy is it to watch some of that shit back though, man? Just seeing the size of the crowd Yo. and like how big we built this thing up to over the past couple of years is kind of crazy, man. It's insane, man. These uh, I, was, I was telling Sam, like being able to watch back a lot of these behind the bars, especially from tour, yeah, has been my way of reliving the show because yeah. I really forget we we're kind of in a autopilot on the road, and, yeah, and we get to the venue, we set up, and once it's go time on stage, you just kind of no drop intended in the flow state and yeah. until it's time to pack up the gear so being yeah. able to watch this back man it's just like damn like that actually that happened dude it's crazy it's crazy no it's it's like every time we get back from tour i'm i'm processing what just happened for so long yeah. like yeah. It, it, like a couple months later some random memory of something that happened at a show will pop into my head and i'm like damn that really did happen like we really did do that you know what, was there anyone that recently that popped in your head since since we've been back from the europe tour <sighs> 
I'm trying to think anything specific that came back to me. You know what came back to me was that song we did. I actually mentioned it on on uh, the first episode we recorded for the podcast. Which the solo one? episode was uh, for the love of the game? For the love of the in, oh, in Amsterdam. Hey. In Amsterdam, dude. <laughs> that song was crazy. And then coincidentally, somebody commented the other day and was like, "Yo." Um, they commented on a live clip that we posted and they were like, for the love of the game in Amsterdam was like the hardest song we've ever heard, man. Fire. Put that shit out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's kind of a cr crazy coincidence that I mentioned that just the day before they said that in the comments. But um, <laughs> that was a dope one, man. But yeah, fire. random songs, random like uh, crazy ideas will come back to me. Uh, it, and also just sort of like the, the social lizing aspects of it like yeah. random like dinners we had and and uh fire you know, dinners man going bowling and shit like that will come back to me out of nowhere so it's fun tour was tour was a great like it was it was a lot of work yeah very exhausting but it was a lot of like great team building man i felt like you know like if in high school you're on like a, a group field trip man. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely With, without the chaperones you know what i mean so yeah. it's like you know just make sure you're able to do the job the next day and, and, and yeah. show up and yeah that's kind of what it felt like but the whole team is super fun man dedicated to the craft 100 percent. 100 percent, bro it's amazing it's 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 really dope man and uh it is it's such a kind of binary thing like being on the road versus being at home they're so different mm. and i feel like being on the road is such a kind of unnatural way of living in the sense that it's just so adrenaline fueled it's so much travel so many flights so many ubers so many airbnbs and then getting home like for me i, I always find i need time to decompress yes um yes. so you know maybe we can start there we've been back from tour for a couple months how you been since getting back? How has the, uh, you know, readjustment to, I guess, regular life felt? Man. And what's been going on? Yeah, being back from tour, uh, the readjustment has been just that, uh, a readjustment. Yeah. It's kind of different when you wake up without, like, a true agenda. Like, you have things you want to do. <laughs> yeah. But they're not, like, hard time frames. Like, you right. know, flight at 11.45, we got to be at the airport. Yeah. Big Elise can, can even talk about that. Like, she, like, you know, scheduling, the, yeah. the, all the notion Yep. Forms to make sure we're all aligned. Shout out to Big Lee. Shout out Big Lee. Notion squad. Big Lee is in the building. You can't see her. She's standing and taking a bow right now. <laughs> Holding it down. Yes. So it's like um, you kind of I kind of get used to it. So now I'm back home and it's like, you know, kind of freestyling my, my Notion daily. It's kind yeah. of just been like, yeah, maybe you want to wake up at nine o'clock. Maybe <laughs> I don't. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But but the but the cool thing was that was getting back into a rhythm of daily daily activity, yeah. producing a lot more. Dope. Um being able to cook, you know? Yeah. Like one of the things during the pandemic, uh a way to like step away from music yeah. was uh, get out the studio was for me to cook. And yeah. uh, on the road coming back home, I was like, Do I want to get straight back into the studio? Yeah. I still needed something to break up my daily routine. So yeah. cooking has been that and that's been kinda good. See, you talking about cooking actual food. Like real like I thought you were talking this whole time I thought like you were talking about making studio. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we we do that too. But um I get it's it's just like just Cause, because we're like fully, when you're on tour, you're fully immersed in music. Yes. Uh, you're listening to music on the flights. You're, yeah. you're performing music. Fact. We're talking about music. New yep. music is dropping every week. Yep. And so like, yeah, I just kind of came back and was listening to like, you know, silence and just yeah. things cooking on the stove, man. Yeah, hell yeah. What's, but it what, did help. What's up? That's, no, I, I feel that. Getting back into those routines and those like comforting activities is so essential because I do feel a little bit of like an emotional lull, right? When I get yeah. back, when that adrenaline starts leaving my system. So I feel like getting back to the things that feel comforting is uh, is essential. Well, but, what's something that's comforting for you? Like what, what did you find yourself doing in that in that free time? For me, it's like I, I sit in this big, uh, big ass leather chair in my house okay. that okay. I, I sit in every morning. I write my journal in there. I do my meditation there sometimes. Um, yeah, so sitting in the big chair lately, I've been going on a lot of walks, getting back to doing that, getting okay. outside, Get outside, catching some sunshine. The beauty of LA, man. Yeah, man. It's uh, nah, but it's it's important. I'm curious, man. What are, what's some of your favorite things to cook, man? Like, what do you cook up in the kitchen? Um, you know what? I, I think I'm kind of pushing myself to to try other things. Yeah. I'm. I think I'm finally at the stage in my life I understand the idea behind cooking, right? Yeah. Like I normally would cook just to eat. Like right. sustenance, like yep. I'm hungry. So survival, survival food, right? <laughs> Not the best. Yeah, you know, uh, maybe over seasoned sometimes. Okay, uh, that's better than under. It's better, uh, better than under seasoned. You know, yeah, but yeah. I wouldn't like feed it to people all willy nilly. You know, right, 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 but right. But now I feel like I'm at a point where oh, I understand why 
like aromatics are cool in a dish mm. or, or why a stock is important for like a soup or like rice and yeah and it so now i'm having way more fun so right now like i'm still like heavy into like you know like like cooking steaks and stuff yeah but different ways um yeah, yeah. i started like i fry i did like this buttermilk fried chicken Ooh. yesterday day before yesterday yeah, that sounds fire i never fried anything without an air fryer a I, day in my life i've never fried anything without an air fryer yeah it's uh it's kind of traumatizing man because really? you, know, you can't put out you can't put a grease fire out with water so if anything you, you, you ever think about things like that like i've never thought about that <laughs> if something's dude. on fire your first instinct <laughs> is to douse water on it and it's just like that's the worst thing to do really with the grease that fire. makes it go it makes crazy? it yeah it goes insane i have no idea <laughs> wow insane. good thing we're having this conversation so man. safety I'm... first kids safety first. wow that's <laughs> important to know that's amazing so how have you leveled up your cooking game like you say now you understand yeah. more than more that do you watch like chopped or something or do you read cookbooks or what's your thing you use yeah recipes? i watch uh i watch a lot of youtube man youtube is like Hell the best yeah. culinary school out right now man yeah uh, it's facts. free Yes. <laughs> and yes. uh but but what's cool is that i love reading recipes but it's cool to see why people do things in practice yeah and i think that's why podcasts are great too because people can go a little bit further into why they use pep paprika you know what i mean right. and they can talk about it as they're doing it yeah, and yeah, i think yeah. for me that's way more helpful in context to the final dish yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah uh youtube is huge it's, I, I just watch food tv just casually anyway hell yeah um never really sp- wanted to be in that universe but yeah. it is fun to watch competition cooking shows for sure that's for dope sure. that's dope um yeah me and lisa watched a lot of chops during the pandemic that was our go-to every night we ate dinner we watched chop you would eat dinner and watch chop yes okay uh, yeah. <laughs> and that was like an important association i feel like it's like all right we're eating what we just cooked and now we're seeing what we what we should have been doing and now tomorrow night maybe we'll apply some of what they're doing uh, but it did help us. It it just helped to gain sort of an understanding of the basics, you know, exactly. like just like use some kind of fat when you're cooking something on the pan, you know. Exactly. Um, you can add these seasonings together and they'll pretty much always work. It's, <laughs> once you get that base, the basics of the language down, you can improvise a little bit more, yeah. which is freeing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, uh, okay, so the people want to know. Uh-oh. The people want to know. <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> they want to know how we met, man. A lot of comments came through asking uh, how how me and you uh, first connected. And it's kind of funny because um, me and Jazz, we met at a Rose Bowl gig. Rose Bowl. Rose Bowl gig, man. Can you believe it? It's crazy. But not a Beyonce style Rose Bowl gig. Uh, we were in a tent on the field. On the field. For a corporate event performing with a group of MCs led by um, our mutual friend, Austin Antoine. Shout out my guy, Austin Antoine. Yeah, yeah. shout out to Austin Antoine, super dope artist and uh, incredible writer, but also incredible freestyle yeah, yeah, MC. Yeah. And he put together a troupe of, of uh, I think there were four MCs. Four MCs. Um, and I was one of them, and, and you were the DJ. That's when we first met. <laughs> uh, what's crazy to me, though, I was thinking back on that show. That was probably one of the last live gigs I did before... That's right before the Quarantine. pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That was in 2020. I can't remember if that was like for sure the last last, but it was one of the last public facing things that I did. Yeah. Um, that, was, that was summertime, right? That was, um, when did... Oh, it was January. Oh, it was January? It was January. Oh, it was January? Oh, Hard that, to tell that, in L.A. Yeah, Hard yeah, to tell yeah, in no, L.A. It, it felt like July. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been. It was like 80 degrees yesterday, so exactly. it, it's December. Um so yeah, damn, that was January. So that, that was definitely had to have been the, the hard line, yeah, yeah. Because so, I think things shut down. What March? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's wild, man. That's wild. Um, but what's so crazy? Uh, thinking back on that, okay, last last live show in person before the pandemic. Yep. All this time passes. I was doing all my virtual stuff. I was doing the Omegle Bars thing. Started that up. I was doing a lot of live streams. Going crazy. Going crazy. Um, and then when it was finally like, okay, the world might be opening back up again. We might be able to get back out there. Uh. I thought of you immediately, man. Just based on, hey. just based on, based on the vibe and the energy that you brought to that first single gig, the one and only time that I ever met you, and I think we did a couple rehearsals for that as yep, well. Yep, yep. But um, yeah, man, your 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 energy just it it lights up the room, bro. Oh, and, that's and love, it, man. Yeah, Appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's just been such a such a joy to be able to build with you, man, and and to be able to uh to do these shows, man. No, same, yeah. likewise, man. Yeah. Likewise, that. That gig was very unique because um, it was a corporate event. Yeah. And see, the thing about working with freestylers, y'all, uh, <laughs> when they say things are unplanned, it, it really is. Like, <laughs> I, we, we, we rehearsed more so just to kind of get a flow of, like, timing. Like, yeah. All right, boom, 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 boom. And then we get to the gig, and the guy's like, 
like I'm backstage, and then they make all of you guys move to the other side of the stage. That's right. And then meanwhile, Paris Hilton is like giving like a TED talk, damn near about tech and stuff. That's like, right. Shout Paris out to, Hilton. Shout out to Paris Hilton. So yep. all right, I'm thinking it's gonna be. A, I had no clue, guys, no context. And then uh, we get by, backstage. Paris Hilton is walking off, and the guy's like, "Yeah, just stand on this thing." I'm like, "Dope." <laughs> Paris oh Hilton. yeah, <laughs> this, this is ridiculous. Tell them about the thing, man. <laughs> so I stand on this thing. I have my little bitty controller. I'm thinking like as a DJ, I'm gonna be like a side stage, you know, like uh, there's no reason for me to be center stage. Yeah. And so I stand on this this little podium looking thing on the stage, and sure enough just like home cuz just pushes me out to the <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just on this podium just sliding across this like Paris Hilton's walking out <laughs> and then I come like sliding <laughs> <laughs> and now now I'm center stage and they're not out yet and I'm just like yeah y'all ready to party or what <laughs> a, bu- a bunch of people uh, mind you a bunch of people in suits with lanyards like that was the that was the vibe it looked like the hypest hip hop show of the year bro people seated in suits and lanyards and, and lanyards. you're on a full on fl- floating platform floating dog. platform with an itty bitty controller with zero context like yeah. is there like I think the setup with, with corporate shows is always tricky because yeah. there's no one knows how to transition into the next phase yeah uh, i learned that sentence from you by the way transition into the next phase oh let's go <laughs> hell yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. um but yeah like that was just it, it was like it felt awkward but it was yeah. like it was like oh snap by the time you guys came out like it really did become one of the dopest shows because they yeah. stood up they were they were having fun they, like they were probably waiting for this the entire day yeah and y'all brought it and i was uh everyone's style uh, I think it was you, Lex, Austin. Yep. Um, Lex Rush. Yeah, shout out to Lex. Like, everyone had a different style. Yeah. And they approached it differently. And Jazz, yeah. did you DJ for them when they were on the mic? Yeah. Like, you were DJing their set? Yeah. 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 That's dope. Actually, just kind of playing, like some, like, some industry beats and just kind of, like, catching everyone. Like, okay, this feels like she's about to teeter off. Maybe Mac will pick it up. And, I, and irony, the timing really worked for everybody yeah. so like that's, that's why i was like damn they, everyone here is freaking dope as hell it was smooth man it ended up being really really smooth um and that's what i love about doing improvised shows honestly is like you kind of have to commit you know like Ooh. you can't it's like either we're gonna map it out and mm. we're gonna know exactly what we're we're doing and that's what's gonna give us the confidence that we're gonna be able to crush it or we're just gonna we're gonna wing it wing like it. we're gonna freestyle it <laughs> and and in a weird way that gives me the confidence because i know it's wide open mm, so it's like i don't have to be doing any one exact thing at any given time but based on the energy i'm getting from you and in that case with the other rappers like based on what i'm feeling from them yeah, it's a yeah. lot of body language reading the energy and stuff and Interesting. i mean that's my favorite way to do it obviously but that's, uh, that's dope man like yeah. like when, when did you realize that when did this become like a realization for you of like that because you know like getting in front of people yeah it's always going to be butterflies always oh, yeah. nervousness like when did you realize that yeah i think like in terms of realizing that the that improv was more comfortable for me on stage that probably came like when i was in college because it prior to that like i, I performed with my group state of mind that, right. you know my homies from middle school and on through high school and um that was all written material you know like um at some point in high school we started incorporating like a 10 minute freestyle cypher segment within the middle of the set nice. just for fun um uh, so that was my first like dipping my toes in it but like 90 percent of the music we performed was like from our from our uh, albums catalogs, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 uh but then in college i really started going deep into the improvisational thing as like this is actually how i'm presenting you know the final product i had a band in college um called the cleanse shout out to the cleanse okay shout uh, out to the cleanse. <laughs> shout out to the crazy cleanse. name crazy name <laughs> sounds like a juice like it's, it was not a juice cleanse it was not a colon cleanse um yeah i don't know i think i came up with it so sorry y'all but uh but we rocked a lot of parties and stuff and i would i would uh, it was like live instrumentation and i would freestyle the full set and that's when i first started getting comfortable doing that and i was like dude i, I love this because we were rocking college parties and stuff and you never knew what the vibe was going to be for or, sure. or what the environment was going to be for like, sure. you know? So, um, having the flexibility, like whether it was like a tiny little house party where we're just crammed in the corner and we're like in the living room, but people are kicking it outside. Yeah. So when you pass through, you're kind of part of the music. Like I remember vibes like that or some of them, you know, it's USC. So sometimes like the music industry program would like rent, like trussing for a stage and like actually build out like a fucking stage no in, in the, behind some big, like, you know, frat house or whatever, or whatever it was. And, and so I never knew what the vibe was going to be. And so for me, it was like a cheat code to be like, I just show up blank slate and I'll improvise about what's happening <laughs> live. And that's how I'll draw people in. Oh, and yeah. No matter what, I know I can, I can make it fit, you know, hmm. um, instead of being locked in, but yeah 
Shout out yeah. to the college era, man. Shout out, yeah, man. Get, definitely got a lot of reps in in the college era for sure. The, the reps are a big part of it, right? Hundred percent. Got to get those reps up. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Do you wish we had a floating riser for you on, uh, like, for the Odyssey tour? Did man, you? it would. Um, you know what? It would make getting around that state those stages because on this on the Odyssey <laughs> tour, these stages were way bigger than yeah, the Energy yeah, yeah. Exchange. Way so bigger. Getting from on and off, maybe. Yeah, yeah. True. Just for speed. Just yeah, for efficiency. <laughs> Just for for efficiency. efficiency. We should it. probably spring for the floating riser sheerly for efficiency. <laughs> you, man, just to get your setup out there. I'm, I'm thinking for the next one, dude, like just popping out from the bottom of the stage, man. Like yeah. A little smoke. Oh, psst, just land. Hey, man, I'm here for it. You come from the from the top? Yeah. I will, <laughs> I will be lowered down. Yes, let's do it. That's the new walkthrough. That's I no longer walk. enter from the back of the venue. I enter from the fucking the, ceiling, man. The ceiling. Oh, the glide through. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the glide through. <laughs> the fly through, dog. <laughs> the fly through. Oh, that's amazing, man. Um, No, but it's true. The stage has got way bigger. Okay, so let's take people back to the first to the first one the first show um after after quarantine i remember i sent you a dm um when i when you know i was talking with my team like let's get out there let's do some shows let's test this idea of doing a fully improvised you know freestyle show yep like an hour runtime like a full set and uh, i sent you a dm i don't know if you remember a black thought freestyle uh, rhyming Quest over love. quest love yeah, 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 yeah. and quest love was djing and doing like a blend the roots picnic yeah yeah, 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 yeah. roots picnic that's yeah, right yeah. and that and that that makes sense because it was like the quarantine version exactly that's why they were doing it like that it was like they were filming it outside there was no audience it was back in that time when like people would pre-record their sets and like yeah. submit them to a virtual presentation for the festival um i saw that clip obviously it was super fire black thought is is one of the goats to me legend um and I basically sent you that, and I think I was just like, yo, I'm trying to do some shit like this. Are you down? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how it went. <laughs> yeah. And you, were, you were like, hell yeah, let's get it. Um, and uh, oh shit, Sam's like, Sam, I screenshotted the DM actually, so. Oh shit, when there I it said, is. <laughs> when I said, I think I said, it was actually like, yeah, I know, because yesterday I pulled it up and I screenshotted it. <laughs> <laughs> Context is key. Well, anyway, you know, paraphrasing, hey, you down to do some crazy shit like this? Jazz says yes. And, uh, that's fire. That's dope. Um, first show, Hollywood Improv Comedy Club, side room. Side room. Not the main room. Not the main room. Side room. 50 person capacity. 50 people. 50 people, small room, me and you. And for people to submit words, this is the craziest part. It's crazy. For people part. to submit words for me to freestyle about, because that's part of what we do is people like submit words from the audience and I use them to make up the songs. Uh, we had an easel. Mm -hmm. We had an easel and we had like pieces of paper. Big, or, or was, it, was it paper, paper? It was cardboard. It was okay. like middleweight cardboard. Got it. That's right. That's not right. too that's flimsy, right. but right. not too heavy either. You know, that's right. Somewhere that's in the right. middle. That's right. Uh, mad pens and Sharpies. Mad Sharpies out on people's tables. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> People had tables. They had tables. People had tables. <laughs> dinner club. Yeah, yeah. Like dinner small vibe. dinner club vibe. You could order dinner. Yeah, true. During the set. Uh, you could eat during the set. Um, dude, it's crazy to reflect back on that first show Yeah. for, for two reasons. One, I personally had no idea if it was going to work, just in general, the concept. Like, I thought it seemed like it, like it could work mm. to do a fully improvised show with, like, words submitted by the audience. The whole run of show, it was like, is this a thing? Yeah. You know, will this work? It was the very first test, which is crazy to think about. Um, and, and then the other reason that it's so crazy uh if i can remember what the other reason was but i can't but that's why it was so crazy because we were testing it yeah. there was another reason why it was so crazy <laughs> thinking back to it i think what i was gonna say is, is is to see how far we've taken it from there when you look at that atlanta clip i wanted to ask Ooh. you man did you have any idea like when we were doing the 50 people in the side room at the hollywood improv that we would eventually take it to to the atlanta level you know what's crazy uh, when you first sent that that dm and like I saw that, and I'm like, yo, this is a tight performance. And then it started to contextualize, like, what is a freestyle show even look like? <laughs> yeah. Like, how do, like, it was one of those things where I just kind of, like, green screened, like, us, where, like, Black Thought and Quest was. Yeah. But, like, the crowd was just, like, shrugs. We don't yeah. know. I didn't know how people were going to move. I didn't know how the, <laughs> I had no clue. So, like, the first show gave so much context to the potential of the show. Yeah. And then, not only was it, um, like it was fun to be a part of, but like being that intimate of a crowd, you can see everyone's eyes, like yeah. you know, which is rare at the bigger stages. But Facts. this this first show, I like I'm able to look at everyone in their eye, and they're like, oh snap, they are really 
like loving this. Hell yeah. Like they are fully immersed. They're reacting to like the bars, the the visual cues of the words being on the cards yeah. help massively because everyone's like engaged together. It really felt yeah. like a magic show. Hell so yeah. like I was like, damn. Like it was that point I was like, oh snap, this could be this could be nuts. Yeah. Like this could be crazy. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. What about you, man? Like after that first show, you're done, you're sweating, you walk off stage. Yeah. You're thinking next step already? Definitely. I was like, fuck yes, we have something. Woo! That's how I felt after walking off after the first. I was like, yes, we, we got something. <laughs> yes. We yeah. have the first thing. Yeah. But I uh, but then I was immediately like, the ESO cannot be the long term <laughs> thing. Because we threw away, like, just, like, from an environmental standpoint, dude. I just, like, no. dumpster in the back, just throwing away. I mean, that night, so we did a back-to-back, actually. That's so right. So we, we racked 100 people total, but in two separate groups. Cleared everybody out, brought a new crowd in, which is also crazy to think about doing that now. But, um, so, yeah, so we threw away 100. But as soon as we took it up to the next level where we did the um, Irvine, Irvine improv. Like, well, 500 people or something? How many I, people? I don't uh, know. Though. What's the capacity? Does anybody know the? Check it out. Yeah, but something like that. That's uh, a I lot of cards, about dog. About 500. <laughs> and we also did a back-to-back there. And I remember like a thousand cards getting just tossed in a dumpster at the end of the night. And I was like, yo, like if this leaks, like yeah, we're going to be yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cancel, dog. Yeah, Whoa. exactly. Like it's way too early to get canceled. Like, <laughs> <laughs> some YouTubers like dumpster divers, like orange, <laughs> orange, <Yeah. laughs> dog, table. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Super Cali They ran out what of space. What is going on? They ran out of space. Face, the letters are getting scrunched um but yeah no that, that that we had to figure out how to get the digital word submission popping but uh, yeah it was 490 is the cap that in uh, Irvine and twice in a row. also also seated um yeah but you also got to think about like context here all right 50 people is a lot of cards like big old cards. I don't know if you can shuffle a deck. People struggle with shuffling a deck of 52 cards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a life-size <laughs> deck of cards with words on them. Yeah. Just getting that randomized yeah. with 50 people just look like a task. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. The yeah. ease. <laughs> here go. Oh. <laughs> wow. There's the ease. Look at the floor, too. I was just chucking them down on the floor. <laughs> just <laughs> fully <laughs> adrenalized. Damn, I'm on a wired mic, too. I don't know. Wired that. mic. Yeah. yeah That's yeah, actually yeah, yeah. crazy. That is so funny to see. It's it's also funny the evolution of the show fits for me. Mm. Um because like now I wear that shirt as pajamas. Yeah. It, like it, it gets demoted. Yeah. Each year, like what I thought was fire <laughs> just gets demoted to like, dude, I wear that if I gotta like do some fucking long work. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would never wear that shit on stage. Like, what the fuck? Um, awesome tie dye man. Tie dye's yeah. here to stay. Well, shout out to Big Lease also. Uh by the way, Big Lease is my girlfriend Big. Lisa, if anybody's confused. But uh Ooh, man, shout out to man, Big Lease because she's my uh one and only stylist. And anytime I'm wearing something that looks decent, it's probably because she uh, picked it out for me. So <laughs> Again, in post, we will add the applause. <laughs> um, that's so cool to see, man. Amazing. All right, so from these shows to what we just did, Odyssey Tour, man. Much bigger stages. Much bigger stages. Um, much bigger crowds. Much bigger crowds. I, I'm curious to know, man, just for you, like, because tour is such an unnatural lifestyle and it's so different from the day-to-day -day when we're here, like, what's, you know – what do you love about being on the road? What's maybe your favorite part about being on the road? And then, like, what's the biggest challenge for you? Mm, man, really good question. Um, well, I guess I'll, I'll start with the challenge first, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, like, the challenge of being on the road is that it is exhausting. And yeah. um, I think the lifestyle, like, like I'm pretty, like, routine in my in my daily. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I'm when I'm back home in LA, mm. um, that routine gets thrown out of whack on tour. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, the communication with like friends and family kind of falters as well because yeah. of different time zones and Facts. you know they may be texting and we're having like a you know like a recap and uh, we we forget to so like it's yeah. so easy to get lost in the time warp of your of yourself right yeah. and um, so sometimes it does feel a little selfish when for me at least like. With I have a big family, a lot of friends, and yeah. the communication just kind of like fell off. So like, um, social media was the best way for people to see. Oh, okay, I see where you're at. All yeah. right, all right. So, see you next week, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, man, like tour was tour is amazing because you get to go to different places. Um, I love traveling because I love to eat food. It might not look like it, you know what I'm saying, but your boy loves to eat. <laughs> hey. um, and uh, like, yeah, and different different lifestyles, different weather. Yeah. Like, 
Um, I don't know if like on tour, like I have my daily routine of just getting out the Airbnb or hotel and just going for a walk. Like, yeah. Like 90% of my day was just to see, like I have my AirPods in, not listening to anything, but just like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm in the- Okay, that's a strategy But if you see right me, there. if you see me, I'm gonna be just like- mm. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. a strategy, that's bro. A strategy. That's just people, so, so people don't approach you. They, they, they leave you alone. Yeah, you, you don't know? have to do the stop and chat. Exactly. Nice, like, you're still like popping that. out like, huh? Right. And then well then they really get the message, hopefully. If you pop one out and say, huh, and they don't like say, Oh my bad, never mind. Please proceed, then they're clearly not very socially aware. Life but, uh, hack. AirPods <laughs> with nothing planned. That's uh, awesome. But like but walking around and just seeing what like um, you know, going to restaurants, see what they're playing on the radio and Ubers yeah. and, and malls and stuff and you know, just just kind of absorbing, you know. Yeah. It does give context to like a lot of the cities that we've been to. Yeah. You know, um out of the touristy areas of course. But once you get like around some locals, you're like, oh, I do feel like certain cities I understand. That's dope, dude. And I, I, I love that. I noticed that about you, too. Um, yeah, you'll get out on solo journeys when we're on tour. Like you'll go and you'll go check out a restaurant, go ch- you'll check out a sporting event. You'll go, you know, do this and that, buy, buy a new fit, whatever. Check out the, the local scene. <laughs> and I love that. I'm a huge fan of like the long walk. I'm yeah. a huge fan of the solo walk. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like I said, I'm actually just bringing that back into my routine, and it feels really good to be doing that just just in my neighborhood. But um, do you feel like doing that on tour helps you even like um, for your set, like for your DJ set or musically? Like, does it help you as a performer Absolutely. to get the vibe of the city? Absolutely, I think I think everyone should do it. You know, because um, yeah. you kind of miss the beauty of being in all of these amazing cities, right? Yeah, um, it it does help me with my set, and but like but like you say, it's. Um, you, you, you never know when you get into the building, you yeah. know, but I think it helps contextualize. Like, oh, snap, this is where we are. Yeah. Like, I remember we were in Detroit and you like certain cities just have a certain like like pride. Yeah, right. Yeah, sure. Like the Detroit's, the Atlanta's, the yeah. Houston's, like yep. the New York's, like the L.A., like certain places, Chicago, you go and it's just like, yo, you can't not acknowledge the people Facts. like from here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of this bleed over in like a lot of other cities. But when like just go, I forgot about Detroit. And then when I was out in the city. Yeah. And I was like, oh, snap, like Detroit loves some Detroit. Yeah. Like this is tight. Like yeah. I got to I got to pull. I bought a bunch of records out there. Yeah. Um, learned a lot about history man dilla met, met a ton of like dope like like house djs yeah. Dog, like it, yo and then then i get on stage and it's just like let's just, let's try it and then they go crazy when it's something like like oh this guy knows what he's what yeah. he's talking about you know it's such a dope nod man absolutely to the, and it's so cool because yeah for, uh, if, for those of you who have never been to you know uh one of the odyssey shows jazz warms things up um uh, before i hit the stage for for 30 minutes with his own set and uh it's so dope when you play the local shit yeah, yeah. um it's just and i feel like it's a respect thing too you know it's like hey we're here in your city like we're guests here in your city we're excited to be here like Yo, what's going on, what's y'all? Up? Like we yeah. know what's up. You know, Absolutely. We, yeah. yeah, we 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 do the knowledge, man. We do yeah. due diligence. Hell the yeah. funny thing about that for me is like, cause I'm not a sports guy at all, as you know. <laughs> so like on tour, it's like every city we go to, like on the way to sound check, someone will be like, All right, Harry, Lions, Tigers, and you know, whatever. And it's like list off the teams. <laughs> that was good, right? Yeah. Lions, uh, what's it, what else? Yeah, you got two of the Detroit squads there. Yeah, he's nailing them. So Detroit in the building. Burr, burr, burr. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Um, and then like, usually it, it doesn't ever come up, but, um, but stuff like that is funny. Everyone's always like careful with me too. Cause like, I, I, I go really deep on the things that I do know about. For sure. And then there's other areas of life where people are like, this is common knowledge. And I'm like, who's that? What? You know, <laughs> I, I, in, uh, in Toronto, I remember Mikey was like, right before I went out, he was just like casually like, yo man, you know, uh, Toronto is called the six. Uh, and I was like, yeah, bro. I know that. And so and that, was that, that, was that, was that was it. And then, like, as we walk on, as as we walk on, uh, I'm like in my head, I'm like, okay, somebody wrote the six, like as their word suggestion yeah, yeah, yeah. for the show, for sure. And then Con was like, yo, make sure Harry knows this, you know. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's just funny stuff like that. Everyone's that is always so funny. watching out for me, but um, but that's dope, man. I love that. I love that you go on those solo journeys. Um. And I think it's important, man. I love going on long walks, dude. I think a lot of, I feel like a lot of artists and creatives enjoy the long walk. Um, it feels like a good way to clear the mind, but also help focus the mind in a weird focus way. as well. Yeah. 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 And then, I mean, like, uh, fortunately, the time of year we were doing it was like spring. And then we did Europe in like the fall. Yeah. So like uh, at the same time, getting a taste of seasons, you know, like 
like LA is just kind of like you know the same. Yeah. Uh, so it was cool to just you know see trees regrowing and that crisp like Hell yeah. like or the, what's that morning dew like in yeah. the morning and yep. in the springtime the fall air yeah. like I kind of like that was half the reason why I got out. I was like, yo, I'm not gonna get this again. I'm going yeah. back to. You know, desert so yeah uh, let me just soak up all of like we, like um portland was so dope because of just clouds <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly <yeah>. seasons <laughs> seasons there, it was like damn not not a lick of sun I, I, I'm, I'm with this i'm with this <laughs> yeah yeah Man, well when my parents watch this uh bag they're gonna be like yeah nah no that, it's enough of the clouds <laughs> <laughs> my dad, my dad just had his birthday, and my mom gifted him this like special light that like you can look at in the morning, and it like replicates getting like the sunlight. Sun? Interesting. Yeah, because like people are like you know like Portland has the highest rate of seasonal depression, man. Like people I, yeah, are I, sad. I, I believe it. You I know, it. It, it is a long. It's a long period of gray, but um, but I love it, man. And it made me. I grew. I was born and raised Talk there. Talk about it. I, you know, I, I, just, I thought that's how the world was, and then two days into LA, I was like, this is crazy. And yeah. after the first week, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I am never leaving. I am never leaving. It's always vacation here. So, so was there an adaption period when you got to LA from Portland? <laughs> yeah, but I quickly was like, "Woo! Like, <laughs> let's go, dude. This is dope. Palm trees. It's sunny every day. Like, it wasn't hard to adapt, but it was shocking because it was so different from what I was used to." But do you feel like that makes it harder to like discipline and focus up if it's like if yeah. the weather's nice? Like oh, Portland definitely. will probably make you be indoors a little more. Yeah, when I first got to uh, USC, I was just like smoking weed at noon every day, and I was just like, <laughs> dude, this is dope. <laughs> like, let's go to the beach. Like, yeah, it was hard to get my act together at the beginning for sure. But now I do feel like, um, you know, now I'm a bit older, a bit more responsible, much more productive, Hell and yeah. I do feel like the weather plays a big role in terms of me feeling happy. Mm, like it really, I feel like I emotionally it affects me. It man. does, man. That's Natural light, dude. Yeah, it's so good. It's so good. Speaking of, so you're from Maryland originally. Yeah. And then, uh, and moved to New York. Uh, how old were you when you moved to New York? So I, I was born in New York. Oh, uh, born in New York. Started, okay. Started in New York, yeah. moved to Maryland. Got it. Um, stayed out there like public school, college, and then moved back to New York, I would say, what, like 20, like 13, 14, or okay. something like that. Yeah. And then, um, but it's like different. I was like, grew up in like Brooklyn. Yeah, moved to Maryland, and I, when I moved back to New York, I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I want to live in Brooklyn again. So yeah, I ended yeah. up living in Washington Heights, and even though it lo- they're close on the map, it's like two different, yeah, like lifestyles of 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 the city. You yeah. know, like Washington Heights is like right above Harlem for people who understand Manhattan. It's like way up there on the west side, um, but we were right on Riverside, and it was like the water is there, mm. the sun sets in the west, so mm. we get like the beautiful sunset right over the water. Dope. Um, and it was, like, I loved it, man. Loved Hell New yeah. York. Hell yeah. Do you feel like, uh, obviously New York is, you know, the city where hip hop was invented. Yeah. Um, do you feel like moving to New York, impact, moving back to New York impacted you like musically or creatively like on your journey? Does that city, do you think it's part of your story as a as a musician? Man, I thought it would have. I think as a kid, it, it was. Yeah, yeah. Like, during, when I was a kid, man, the radio, Hot 97 was, like, mm. the thing. Like, yeah. the cyphers on the radio were the thing. Yeah. Uh, my dad was, my dad's a DJ, so, like, I just remember, like, him playing tons of reggae in the car. So, as a kid, like, New York, yeah. and Brooklyn in particular, shaped me. Like, you had all the legendary guys, the Biggies, the Jays, yeah. the Fabs. Like, like yeah. New York, Brooklyn in particular just had a run facts um of really dope mcs yeah and i think as i got older and new york got more expensive it kind of lost that so when i mm. moved when i moved back to new york it was like oh it's not really where the creatives go they, they tend to go elsewhere yeah and so it kind of it was a struggle at first man so yeah. like djing was like the only thing that was popping i would say on the yeah. music scene yeah for people so like tons of right now new york djs probably crushing it yeah um but as far as like the artists they all had to go somewhere else so that's why la became a hotbed miami became a hotbed houston's a hotbed yeah um but as a kid for sure man like that mold i I was in maryland we would just argue all the time like who's the best mcs yeah just like they're like lil wayne i'm like nah (laughs) jay-z we would would just never see eye to eye until we got older we're just like oh yeah like they're all dope like everyone's dope in a different kind of context yeah that's crazy um, no, that makes a lot of sense. I feel like if I if I would have grown up out there, um, I would have seen it differently. Because I was when I was young, like when I was in middle school, we were like 
anti-mainstream anything. Yeah. So yeah, like I went yeah. through a phase where I was like, Jay-Z's whack. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah, fuck yeah, with Jay-Z, <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, that's just like some mainstream corporate shit. Facts, of course, facts. but I didn't know what the fuck I was talking about because I'd never listened to Reasonable Doubt or, I, I, you know, I, this was like 2002, 2003 or whatever. But I was just like, Black Alicious, J5, yeah. you know, all underground J5, shit. J5. Um, yeah, yeah, like Def Jux, all that stuff. Um, and then later I was like, oh my God, like, what am I talking about, dude? I'm missing out on so much. You know, I, it, it took me until I was like in high school before I really started listening to Jay-Z mm. and and uh, even a lot of the like the greats, like Nas I've been a fan of since back then because I had heard Illmatic um, when I was that age, but um that's dope to be growing up out in Brooklyn at that time and to have that be like what's popping. That's, yeah, that's insane. Man. It's interesting because like what you're saying is is a is a good point. I think people discover artists through like you know the radio and TV and stuff. Yeah. But in New York, like when I was a kid, like the mixtape era was like the thing. Like, yeah. That's like, crazy. That was like the proving grounds of who was going to be the next like dope rapper. Yeah. So before they even like got record deals and stuff like that, they would they would do these mixtape like like Fifty Cent and yeah. like. Like, yo, and, and you would just be like, like, even Nas had his run on, like, he would have yeah. the album Nas, and he'd have, like, like mixtape Nas. And yeah, it's, yeah. like, different different tiers of, of rapper. Yeah. They're trying to make songs for the radio versus just trying to rap rap. Facts. And I grew up, like, that was a proving ground. I was like, nah, let me, let me bump the mixtape first. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, and, and now we're just, my friends and I, it's like trading cards. Like, nah, I got this new Lloyd Banks mixtape. Yo, yeah. you heard this, and it's just like, we're trading, and we're going back. Uh, Locks, Locks was going crazy. Yeah. So, like, that's what got me into these particular guys. So, Wait, what's interesting, like, like Jurassic Five, like, how'd you get into like Black? Like, I know you're like Black Alicious, um, Jurassic. You went to, saw them live, right? Yeah, Black Alicious was the first rap show I ever attended, but we got put on to them by uh, my friend Brady's mom, actually. Shout really? Out, yeah, shout out to uh, Brady's mom. What? Uh, but yeah, me and Brady, we were musical, uh, you know, partners back then, man, back in sixth grade. Um, he was the DJ and I was the rapper. He would, uh, like, he had one of those fabric binders, you know, with like with the rough the texture yeah. with the zipper, yeah. and he would take the tip of the pen and scratch it back and forth on the outside of the binder. Remember, sounded like he was scratching. That's a throwback. Yeah. Whoa. And I would kick my little rhymes and shit with my prepubescent Alvin and the Chipmunk voice. Just, <laughs> oh, what about, what about Using vocab <laughs> words from class. And, yeah, so we had a group and then uh, we were really into it and, and um, his mom read an article in the Willamette Weekly, I think, which is a newspaper up in up in Portland where I'm from about the uh, Black Alicious record and she was like, here. And it, it mentioned that it was like, you know, positive. Like it was like on a positive got tip. Got it, got it. And so she's it, like, oh, it. let me steer these guys in a, you know, because we were listening to radio rap and stuff. And so she, I think she was like, oh, this might be good for them to check out. And uh, I think she gave us a $20 bill and was like, go walk up to Music Millennium and cop this. And so Whoa. that's, yeah. And we put it on and we were like, Whoa! <laughs> I'd never heard anybody rap like that. Rest in peace, that Gift of Gab Rest is the peace, MC the from uh, from Black Alicious, who's like a crazy style style master and super dense lyrical, multi syllabic like alien. And uh, we were just like, "What the fuck is this?" So that's how I got put on to uh, to those guys. And then it was just like building out the um you know the 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 that was the nucleus and then mm -hmm. we just started expanding out from there like charlie tuna from j5 is featured on one of the songs on there ah, so then we so started checking out due j5 diligence. yeah Got read the it. liner notes oh it turns out oh quest love played drums on this track that's Who's amazing quest love? and then find out about the roots and everything was just sort of like organically we built our own sort of like universe up in portland because there wasn't really a scene that much going on that we were aware of up in portland so we were just discovering discovering cats organically that way. That's insane. Cause that's yeah. what I was wondering. Cause you were talking about you named a lot of artists. I'm just like, not, not that they're obscure, but like the level of discovery is like is really tough. Like, yeah. Um. Like I I came across J Five like on accident too. Like, like yeah, I think yeah. they're they're probably featured on a song from someone I liked. Yeah. So like features clearly work, right? Yeah. Like, facts. In, in, as far as discovery goes. Yeah. But um. But that's wild. And like, um. Uh, Portland is West Coast. Like, was there any like West Coast artists? that that you like discovered on your own coming up like that you really gravitated towards um i'm trying to think well we we uh sort of like discovered the lifesavers up in portland um which is by the way lifesavers are a really really dope group um and they they ended up getting signed to quantum projects which is the label ah, that black alicious was yep, on yep, yep, and yep. so i think we like one of the early shows when i saw black alicious i don't know if it was the first one um might have been 
but uh, the Lifesavers opened up, and we were like, these cats are from Portland? This is crazy. Um, we were like, kid, I mean, we were 12 years old, so we weren't on the scene. You know what I mean? Like, even, exactly. they were probably doing really big, they were definitely doing big things in Portland already, and like, if you were like a hip-hop head in Portland that was like 18 and older and could get into shows, yeah, you're probably, you're probably <laughs> you already knew that. But <laughs> yeah, to yeah. us, we were like, how has this been happening all around us this whole time? Like, what, what the fuck, where have we been? It's like, dude, we are 11. Um, but yeah, Lifesavers. Shout out to the Lifesavers, man. Um, they're really, really dope. But I, you know what? I love what you mentioned, too, about the sort of like parallel um, underground vibe of like the mixtape exactly. vibe that was happening from cats that were on the radio that we know as legends from like their records. But then there's like this parallel mixtape thing happening that was like localized because yeah. it was like you had to buy the the, the actual mixtape mix yeah. like like probably right before or maybe aligned with i don't know the exact timing but like the beginnings of being able to download shit off limewire but, but right probably before that yeah. a little bit right so it's yeah. like you actually had to cop the mixtape yep 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 so like you like where in in new york there's always like a spot selling mixtapes right? yeah so yeah. like every big dj had their runs to dj clues or funk flexes that yeah. was their bread and butter and they made a lot of money like and, and then fast forward to like dj drama and stuff like yeah like the mix Mixtape was the was the the brick and mortar of of sauce sauced up rap. Yeah. Um, fast forward, like like when I when you're not in that environment to physically buy them, it's impossible. Yeah. Like you're not there was no Amazon back then. Right. You know. Um. Fact. So like LimeWire was when that came out. At least when I was in Maryland, I was I was able to get like a, a song or two. Yeah. You know, keep my ear to the street of what's going on in New York. Yeah. Because like there, without physically getting this that, that mixtape, you weren't getting it. So yeah. like so that was a, that was a parallel universe for sure. That's it, so dope, dude. That is so do- that's such a different way of experiencing those artists that yes. are now like on everybody's top five. But it's like you know you, you got to hear this whole other other side of their of their creativity. It, it, and I, I was talking to a friend about this where like the, it's so mystified. Like the yeah. artists from the '90s, like we don't know their journey. We just see like the success, you know. Exactly. And um, like you hear all those stories about like DMX, like battling Jay Z. It's like damn, like like there was so much like 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 groundwork that yeah. happened in these guys careers that we are just it's just like like folklore yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like it's just like man i heard like jay-z and big l battled you know what i mean yeah and it's just like you look at it from like oh that's cool but for the streets that was probably like massive that's yeah. like a heavyweight boxing match oh hell yeah for up-and-coming artists you know that's insane so that's insane. so I, I always love that part of it and digging back you know yeah so dope. I got tricked by LimeWire so many times, though. You remember yeah. those <laughs> massive Facts. collab tracks, dude? <laughs> yeah. I thought they were real, and I'd be like, what? It would be like, Eminem, Jay-Z, Biggie, Nas, yeah. Tupac, Big Daddy Kane, KRS-One, Cool G Rap. It would just like go on and on and on forever, and I was like, oh my God, they work together? <laughs> they were in the studio. They did a song together? What the fuck? How are people not talking about this? But it was just some, it was either just some, it was like somebody got the acapellas and put them all on a beat. put them all on, yep. Or it was just something completely different, like a total troll thing. The troll song. It's like somebody's song from some some up and coming rapper that's like trying to blow. I got hit with that a lot, man. (laughs) I had like 14 different versions of Crank That Crank that soldier boy. Oh yeah. Like, like he got me, right. dog. <laughs> First rapper to troll people to on LimeWire. I had many 14 other different MP3s, dog. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It'd be like Michael Jackson beat it. You <laughs> Soldier Boy. Tell me. Oh. Shout out to Soldier Boy. Man. Shout out to Boy, man. Marketing. Marketing genius. That's amazing, dude. That's amazing. He claims to be the first at so many things, but I think he really may in fact be the first to troll people on LimeWire. He figured it out. Wow. That's fucking amazing. Um Dude, speaking of the come up and the climb for some of these artists, man, you you, you mentioned your your father is a DJ as well. Absolutely, DJ Wooligan. Wooligan. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Shout out to DJ Wooligan. Um, what was that like, man, growing up with with your pops as a DJ? Like, was he a, a big influence on you early on? Were you like, oh, that's what my dad does, so I don't I don't know if I like. Did you have that embarrassment thing at all <laughs> of like I don't know if I can do that or uh, what was what was that like, man? Yeah, man, it was it was it was different because I didn't look at it as a DJ. I thought it was just mm. a job, you know. Mm. It didn't look glamorous, like yeah. um. Like watching him. This is before Serato and computers. Yeah. So I, he would have a garage, maybe like the size of of like this this podcast room. Yeah. And just massive, full, by massive, the way. Huge. just huge. No. Full full of <laughs> records, and like you know he just 
he just out there just playing records, needle to the vinyl, boom. And he would have a BPM counter, so he'd have to manually tap out the BPM, Damn. write it on his sleeve, put it in the thing, organize it by genre, and potentially in order he might play these songs in. Wow. And I'm like watching him. I'm just there for the vibe. I'm just like, this song is tight. But he's like <laughs> working. And then it's time to go to the gig, and he's lugging all of his gear up and speakers. And, and I told myself, I was like, I am never going to do that. <laughs> I told myself straight up, I was just like, Nah, that don't seem like it for me. Yeah, but I think what ends up happening is that, like, workload aside, I think DJing is just strictly like taste, you yeah. know. And, and and what I did learn from my father at a, at a very young age is just taste the music. Mm. And like he he would play things and like and he would match them up similarly, right? Like reggae would do these kind of cover songs of popular American records. And yeah. So I I always knew the reggae version and never and then I would then he would play the American version. I was like, oh. Oh, this is where they get it from. Then they'll play like the OG sample that yeah. the American song came from. Crazy. So it became this like spider web of of music knowledge that yeah. I wasn't expecting until I got older. I was like, oh, I see where these songs connect and where the influence came from. Yeah. And I think that's what DJing became to me. And yeah. uh, I never saw myself being a quote unquote DJ. I just wanted to just like share music with people. Yeah. That was the foundation of it. And um, I think now we're, we're at a space where with all these platforms like the sound clouds and the mix clouds and band yeah. camps, you can do what like my pops was doing way back then yeah. it, with different audiences from the comfort of your house. Yeah. You know, so it is all once again, I think it is back to the taste making, era, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's amazing, bro. I mean, I, 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 I love so much of what you said right there. I, one thing that popped in my head was like, if I had uh, lived with somebody who was a professional drummer and I saw them have to pack up the kit and lug it to oh, the gig every night, time. I don't know if I would have gone for it. Because <laughs> like, I fucking hated that part that's of tough, being man. a drummer, man. Yeah. I, I, I loved the drums, but I, I, I didn't get to see like the real behind the scenes. Mm. Um, so that's that's fascinating that you got to witness that part. Um, but yes, dude, the, the curation, the taste, that part is, that's such a, what a cool gift to, to, to receive that, like from, from your pops, man. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, and I agree. I think that's what DJing is all about. It's funny. Cause like me and my, my crew back when we were, you know, 11, 12 or whatever, and Brady was scratching on the, on yep, the binder yep, yep. and then eventually got turntables and was scratching on the turntables. We were very into the scratch DJ. Yeah, you know? yeah, we yeah. were like, yo, Cuber, you know, yep, yep. mix master Mike, yep. like executioners and we we had seen the scratch documentary, documentary um really early on actually that was one of like the first um kind of like long form like hip hop movies that blew my mind mm. and we actually we ended up getting to go see the scratch tour cuz they did a tour for I, it they did do a tour yeah so it was like the executioners um it was like uh uh Cubert was the headliner of it and and uh other people were involved but what was so crazy was the person that blew my mind the most was Z Trip Z Trip is incredible, and, and and he wasn't scratching. Yeah, it was just straight mixing and 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 blending records. And I had never seen that like up close. Mm. We were like always up in the front row back then because we were short and because like we wanted to be in the front <laughs> row. But I remember like I I had never seen that up close. I didn't really. I was like, oh, it's all about the scratching and the technique. And when I saw that, I was like, this is fucking mind blowing. It's crazy because it was just and it was all vinyl at, at that point. Um, he just had his crate out there. Um and he was freestyling, but it was like acapellas over new beats yep. in in key in singing key. comes in it's in key, yep. um which doesn't sound crazy now with the tools that are available maybe but at that point using the pitch control on the turntable to get the tempo the same exactly and then you happen to find out that it aligns in key. I don't even know how cats did that to be yeah. honest but figure it's, it's that out ears it was all yeah this was their best tool man that's insane but yeah I, it was a new joint like every like you know 15 to 20 seconds max like all blended in tempo uh all happening live and uh i, I left there realizing like oh man it's about um curation and knowing what to play next yeah and, and knowing how to string it together i remember one part he he goes he's about to put the record on he's dripping in sweat because he's going so fast he's working he's about to put it on and he's like oh and he thinks it's something he goes yeah yes! <laughs> literally did that ran over threw it on quick cue and then but Boom, and the, yeah, everyone went crazy. crazy. Yeah. It was the perfect thing to play, and I was like, "That's fucking amazing." That's that's what DJing is to me. It's like yeah. um, there, there's so much technical ability, of course, that's required in, in any any job. Yeah. But the things that always blew my mind was just connecting universes that probably never would connect on paper. Facts. You know, and I think Z Trip was one of those. 
Um, DJ AM was one of those as well. Yeah. It just like it, it became DJing became like this open court again. Yeah. Where it was less about just your genre that you're really good at. It be like everything was up for grabs. Hell yeah. And whoever had the most experimental taste and 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 gave gave the fuck the most yeah. about like diving in and researching yeah. and stitching those worlds like kind of one one me over you yeah. know and, and Hell Z yeah. trip was goaded at that bro well you have a super eclectic taste in music like all, obviously the hip hop like hip hop is how we come together Absolutely. and that's like the the way that we work together but you're super hip to shit that I'm not hip to at all even like the like um, Big Lease, like, you know, leading the charge on an emo night yeah. out in Europe. It's like, you know the emo joints, yeah. man. And like, like it, 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 as an example, and, and so much more in obscure shit, like, where do you think that eclectic taste comes from? Have you always had that? Or or yeah, did it good question, expand man. over time? Um, I just I just love music, man. I think yeah. things that tickle my fancy, I'm just always like, I'm one of those, like, yo, what is that? Like, I'm always listening to something. Like, yeah. we'll be in a restaurant, and a one chord progression would, would hit me, like, mid convo. I'm just like... You know the AirPod trick. Just what'd you say? And then yeah. You just lean over to the <laughs> you lean over to the speaker because, like, you know, music is is a language, and I think it the most interesting thing always catches my eye. So, um, yeah. like, uh, TV of course was a big crossover during the whole emo era. There was always like TRL, and I was watching all the like the videos. So, like, that was a good way to to bridge gaps. Um, but also like sampling, like hip hop yeah. sampling, had, it was a beautiful way to got me into like. Um, like Bollywood music mm. and like you just ne- jazz crosses over into this world and yeah. what's going on in Brazil and of course like reggae reggae so like all of these webs still come together under the roof of hip hip hop to me yeah because of because of sampling but nice. um but if you find something that you really like I think you should do your due diligence and, and lean into it a little bit yeah. and you'll you'll find some wonderful things down that rabbit hole yeah i love that and i agree dude that's one of the dopest things about being a hip-hop fan yeah. especially if you get into the production and you get into into the beats and start picking them apart and, yeah. and trying to figure out how they were made it's like being a fan of hip-hop is not just being a fan of hip-hop by extension is being a fan of every other every genre because genre, at dude. some point it, it got pulled in via sampling yeah um so i love that and you and by the way like uh Jazz is not only for everybody watching, not only a, a great DJ with me on tour, but also a, a incredible producer. I appreciate that. Um, man. Yeah, and we we got we got. By the time they see this, we got s- multiple joints out. I think. Hey. Um. But uh. But nah. I I, I love your production as well. well thank like, you, man. Who are who are like some of your biggest influences as a producer? Um. You know what's crazy is that I think everyone kind of has the same answers. Like it's yeah. always, of course, like the Timbos. Yeah. The, yeah. The Pharrells, but I think there's some ones that really like got me in love with the production, like world, and that's yeah. like the the Dr. Dre's mm. and the Kanye's, yeah, on uh, the Just Blaze, Hell like, yeah. uh, because for me, I always like beat making was one thing, but it wasn't until I got into room with art rooms with artists, and it was like, yo, you got to actually make a record, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a whole different mindset, and that's where the fun becomes comes in because you're almost like a like a therapist at that point. Yeah. You're no longer like a, a beat maker or a producer. Right. You're you're just two human beings, three human beings, however many people just coming together for a common goal. And yeah. I think that's where like, yo, let's get the best result out of here. You know? Yeah. And I think that's where it became fun to me. So like a lot of like the the guys who like the like Pharrell was great in the room with people. Yeah. Kanye was always had song ideas, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, but as far as beats goes, man, Just Blaze, Dr. Oh, yeah. Dre, those, those those smackers, man. Yeah, hell uh, yeah, bro. Uh, Dillas, I, like, woo, come on, bro. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, no, that's dope. Though. No, because you very much are a producer, not as as opposed to like just a beat maker. For sure, like for it, sure. when we did awards, we were in here like creating that song together, From top to bottom. And, yeah, 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 and yeah. I remember like you were suggested guiding me through the vocal part and oh try it like this try it like that and and helping bounce things off of me so that i was able to get the best performance from myself so i i I love that man and and you and you smoke that and it's like one thing i would definitely say about you is like um some of my most talented friends at every level in life are some of the most coachable like and Mm, i think i think just like it's just like I not not being afraid to try things, you know what I yeah. mean? It's like it really makes the job I think fun, you know? Hell like yeah. and uh and then for you it's just like it just suggested things of just like like why not, you know? Yeah. But everything you do off top like is already like gold. You know what I mean? <laughs> like Oh, <laughs> thank you. I was like, can we can we can we go can we push it even further? Let's yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. Let's just no, see. but that's what makes it <laughs> no, but that's what makes it so fun for me too, is like I, I love 
taking the energy that's that's thrown at me mm. and channeling that to there perform. Like that's there why I love freestyling. That's why it's always like, yo, throw me some words or yeah. whatever. You know? Um, so to be in the studio and have you, oh, try it like this, try a lower tone, try it, you know, go, reach for that part, you mm. know. Um, to me, that's like the same energy as freestyling. I believe that. But just in the studio. So uh I love that, man. Does that does that also work when you're like when you're doing, you know, like live streams with people and yeah. and doing gorilla bars or even even the live show? Like uh I've been meaning to ask you this. Like yeah, going, yeah. going from the live show, I mean going from uh the streams and yeah. like Amigo and stuff to a gorilla bars to like now you're on stage. There's still kind of a wall essentially yeah. with that with that stage. Um but do you feel like you get that that give back energy wise with um, with these live shows. Definitely, yeah. I feel like for me, it's always a energy exchange. You there know, that's what hey, that's what we call the first tour, <laughs> the energy exchange. But it is uh, whether it's you know like paired all the way down to a one on one interaction on Omegle, or scaled up a little bit to making a crowd with Gorilla Bars, or then even scaled up to a bigger stage like when we're out in London rocking in front of two thousand people. Mm. Like to me, it's the same concept. And it's the same idea and it's kind of like the same way of creating where it's like I show up like I don't know what the vibe is going to be. And then the people fill me up with the energy. There we go. And and that's sort of like what gets me fired up and allows me to like take it to that next level. And people have pointed that out sometimes like if the whoever I'm performing for is not that hype. I'll still find a way to like get there for like sure. for myself, you know, because it's important that I can show up and do a good job regardless. Professionalism, kids. Hey. You listen to that? Professionalism. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, like it's important to, to me to always like at least be able to say to myself, hey, like I brought it, you know, even if even if mm. the people I was performing for weren't weren't feeding that energy back. But um, you can tell just even from the videos, like when the person I'm performing for is hype as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, I'm like, oh, okay, we're going there. Yeah. And then when and then when they see me go there, they go here, yep. and then it turns into that that feedback loop of energy that I love so much. So yeah, it's the it's the same at the shows, but it is interesting. Like sometimes as the venues get bigger, it's so dope, you know, to see us be able to scale it to this larger size. And like when we hit those milestones, like right before we go out, it's like, yo, guys, this is the most, you know, attendees we've ever had. Yeah. And it's like, yo, that's fire. That's, that's crazy. Uh, and I want to keep going bigger and bigger, you know, but um, there is a certain charm to the small room shows sure. sometimes where you say. can see, even throwing back to what you said about the 50 people at the side room at the improv, it's like we saw everybody's face yeah. and the audience members become almost like characters in the event, you know? Um, and so, yeah, that energy exchange for me, like being. Being able to see and feel the audience is super important. So uh, when we're performing <laughs> at the stadiums, it, I don't know what that's going to be like. <laughs> da, I don't da, know what da, that's going yeah, When we take it back to the Rose Bowl, <laughs> but we do it on stage, I don't know exactly what that's going to be like. But uh, I'm really, really looking forward to it, obviously. Hell yes. Um, how, how long have we been going, Sam? You guys have been going for about an hour now. About an hour? Yeah, okay, yeah. dope, dope, dope. Yep. Um. I want to react to a freestyle, but before we do, a couple things uh, I want to touch on. Um, serious stuff. Jazz, what's your opinion of 4DX movies? Man, oh man. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what? Here's the thing. I've been to two 4DX movies in my life. Yeah. Uh, first one was Star Wars. The second one was Batman. Yeah. Um, what's that guy's name who played the Batman in this one? Robert Pattinson. Pattinson. Okay. Shout so out to Rob. Yeah, yeah. Star Wars made sense. Um, but then the theater, there was like like a fire scene and then the theater fire alarm went off. And <laughs> so Because there was flame being yes, shot out. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Part, part of the forty X part of the forty X <laughs> yeah. experience was just like fire going and I don't think they prepared for that. So we're just like stuck in our chairs. <laughs> and, and they're just like, yo, if you want to stay and finish the movie, you can. But anyway, so that was over. That was over one for that one. Then we saw. Then we saw Batman, and uh, it was cool. Left left there pretty sore. Yeah. Um, would I recommend? Maybe not for that movie. Um, That's my bad. That's but my bad. but it did. It, I did watch it again. And uh, I did prefer the movie without the forty. Okay, yeah. I all say right. That. So we I got we got to we got to tell people what the fuck happened with this Batman forty. Oh dude. man. So, all right. <laughs> it's just tour shenanigans, man. I'm always trying to like plan different things for the whole squad to go to. Yes. I had no idea what forty X was. I'm like, <laughs> oh, X, a little more expensive. I'm like, IMAX. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> Next thing you know, it's like we're two minutes into the trailer. Like my beer's all over the ground because this like chair is like on a roller coaster. I'm concussed halfway through. <laughs> 
And oh I honestly God. like hardly saw the movie because yeah. it's like fighting scenes and like the seat is kicking you in the head every time Batman's <laughs> punching somebody. Yo, it's one of the funniest memories of all of the tour. This was back on the Energy Exchange tour. Yeah, Sam, you're the you're the event coordinator. Event coordinator. Like, Sam helps make sure there's fun shit to do on the road. And, really uh, good and, at it. and he's really good at it. And it's a well, really great, you know, it's a kind of really... bad at it, which makes me uh, it's <laughs> interesting. Makes good at it. It makes it more fun. <laughs> yeah, we had no idea it was going to be 4DX. Sam had no idea it was going to be 4DX. Lisa's so excited because she does so much like logistical planning. And mm-hmm. so it's like, oh, wow, Sam planned this I whole thing so. just for us. Like, this is so great. We show up. We're immediately like, why are these chairs so like high off the ground? And like, yeah. why does it feel like we're getting into a roller coaster? We're like, oh, well, like I guess we'll see what happens. On the ceiling and like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, why are the fans on the ceiling? Next thing I know, dude, I've never laughed so hard as when the chairs start kicking into gear. First thing I do is look at Lisa. She's like, what the fuck? <laughs> full screaming. <laughs> and then I look over at you, Sam, and Khan all in a row with full we beers. Got, we got double fist of On just full to... swivel. Whoa. <laughs> dude, your beers were on an actual like camera gimbal. Like your hand was just like doing You guys were like, the movie theater beers are like $14. I'm not wasting a drop out of that thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hilarious. No, but it, it was funny because uh, at least taking that taking that day off like that first scene they're like highlighting all the features of 40x which is a horrible thing to do by the way right because we just sat down i'm trying to take a sip of beer i go like this and the chair does well I was like, wait a minute now <laughs> and we they do like a fighting scene we're all getting beat up yeah and and then sam leans over to me he's like Lisa's is gonna kill me <laughs> <laughs> i look i look over to lisa lisa's like <laughs> Looking for a casual, <laughs> casual movie night. Yeah, not casual. Casual. I look back up. I was like, <laughs> we're good, dog. We're good. <laughs> oh, my God. But to Hilarious. be fair, uh, great, great. Yeah, that's one of the funniest movie, moments of that yeah, of that tour run. Core man. memory right I, there, dog. I just remember just laughing so hard throughout yeah. the entire. It's not The movie's not funny at all, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it was yeah. a lot of laughter that happened. Well, also, <laughs> like, Sam, you're like a fucking film buff, dude. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. I, I look over at Sam. He's like. He's, He's trying awesome. to counteract the 4DX as much as possible. You just scoot off this all- ride. <laughs> Scoot it all the way forward like this, like counterbalancing his head rumble, just like trying to watch the fucking movie. Waited like damn near two years for that movie. They couldn't see anything. Just getting rocked around. Yeah. The funniest part too is is like the response to the score. Yeah. Like the musical score. Like there would be like a bass drone during a part where it's like a slow panning cityscape. And for some reason, my chair is rumbling to the bass drone. I feel like they should not consider the score as something that deserves moving effects, right? Like, that doesn't yeah. make any that sense. That happened right away, too. I feel like that's when we knew it was going to be bad. I don't know. It's a long movie, but yeah. they, they hit you with that, like, trailer beforehand that yeah. where they flex all the movement. We're like, it probably won't be that bad during the movie, exactly. right? <laughs> like, opening title, there's, like, a little bit of bass in the score, and the chair's like, like, yeah. oh, shh, we're yeah. in it. It's, it's just literally just a pan over the city. It's like, why am I? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's yeah. no dialogue, no nothing. Like, Yeah. Also, it punches you. Like yeah. during punch scenes, that's legitimately. That, you gotta Why get consent. You gotta get consent for that first. They gotta yeah, make you dude. sign a form. Like, do you want your ass whipped <laughs> in these fighting scenes? Yes or no? Like, I would have said uh, no, no every time. Well, the yeah, punching like, hurt. I've never like okay, being in the car chase. Like, that's one thing I could see how that's exciting. Yeah, like you're in. It's like a roller yeah. coaster. Never have I once seen the dude getting his ass kicked and been like, I want to feel that. Yeah, exactly. I, this, <laughs> this viewing experience would be drastically enhanced if I was getting my ass kicked. <laughs> That's what this is missing right now. Not even now. you doing the ass kicking. You yeah. got to be the one getting like, damn, put me in Batman shoes. I'm these guys. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Damn. The the part I didn't like was uh was because Bat- Batman's a uh, – Star Wars, they didn't do, like, weather because right. it's not like a – it's planets and space space stations. But right. Batman, they really flex the temperature a lot. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was whenever it rained, it would just be this drizzle coming down. I'm yeah. like, dog. <laughs> I live in Los Angeles. I'm cool on this. Like, ter- but you could, I think Seriously. you turn it off or something. There was like I a. I don't think so, man. Like Not that off That one was turn insane. Anything. You could oh, turn it. That was insane. <laughs> I was up. looking for every switch. There wasn't any. Oh my god. So, so 40x. Funny. 
Um, we're still figuring it out. Yeah, we're still figuring it out. We're we don't know if we it need it. I don't know that it's necessary. It's like just because we can, should we? Uh, uh... Where? Yeah, what movie <laughs> requires it, man? Don't like... pick a 40x combat like movie. Pick a rom com or something. Batman. <laughs> <laughs> 40x rom com. <laughs> you get smooched. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Some little lips come out. Instead of getting beat up in your back, it's just like back rubs. <laughs> <laughs> All central. Oh, that's hilarious, dude. Yeah. Candle sense. Yeah, that, maybe you're. <laughs> Something. Might be honest, something, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, dude, while we're on hilarious tour memories, something popped into my head the other day when I was in the car with Lisa, and I, it, was, it was so crazy to me <laughs> that I had to confirm that it really happened. And actually, Sam mentioned it when he got here today. Like, it's almost unbelievable that this happened. So, Energy Exchange Tour, comedy clubs, right? We were mostly in comedy clubs, like 200 person dinner room <laughs> scenarios, tiny stages trash sound systems great for comedy all right no 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 diss to the you know great for one guy on a mic not great for 808s um <laughs> but that was our foot in the door man and, and uh, it was a beautiful time but uh, one of the the anecdotes that just like brings me right back to the comedy club vibe is uh do you remember when that dude announced you as senior jazz <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yep. Senior Jazz, Senior bro. Senior Jazz. Yo, what the fuck? Senior like, all right. Senior Jazz. That definitely happened, for sure. <laughs> I can't believe that that actually happened. It turned into, I was like, that must just be a joke that we made up. But that actually did happen. So, like, at the comedy clubs, there's, like, usually a staff member that works there, and it's their job to, like, announce the performer. You know, but usually it's a comedian, you yeah, know, so they're yeah. like, hey, ladies and gentlemen, like, make sure you keep your phones away. No filming allowed. Like, da, da, da. We have a special on this drink. And now the moment you've been waiting for <laughs> up next. And so but our show doesn't start with a comedian. It starts with you. Yeah. And we wrote your name, Sir Jazz, S-U-R space J-A-Z-Z. What would it take for someone to decide and commit and say, yeah, that's what it is. That must be Senior Jazz. <laughs> like that's insane, bro. I thought I thought because to your point, if we're at a comedy club and yeah. generally a lot of these people who work at comedy clubs do want to be comedians as well. Oh, and so, you, okay, so I wow. thought it was a joke. Yeah. And so I'm waiting for the that's guy to just kind of like just there was like this. He was you know sometimes they they will say it a little little pause. Yeah. And then get back to it. Yeah. But there was never no getting back to it. That was it. That was there was no joke there, buddy. <laughs> he committed to the scene. Your jazz. And then oh the God. irony is that the green room. It was like a, a hallway. Uh, it was supposed to be a curtain there, but the guy is like someone's holding the door open. Yeah. So every he says senior jazz, and everyone in the room is like. <laughs> And so they're staring at me. I'm just like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> no, I remember Mikey popped his head out. I was like, did he say senior jazz? Bro? And we're just dying, dude. We're trying to make eye contact with you. You're looking back like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Good times, though. Great man. times, man. A lot of a lot of great times at the comedy clubs. Uh, a lot of big big learning curves. Yeah. Um, I think you, we learned a lot of patience. Yeah. And... Uh, but then also I think I think through that it was the entry point as you were saying. Yeah. But through that I think you kind of even started creating like visions in your head of what you saw the show to be. Oh, 100%, man. 100%. And we we learned how to um like troubleshoot and how to make things work on the fly. On the fly. And I think it's actually um like it's better for the first the first tour shouldn't be like all like ritzy and nice and yeah. like oh everything just works great and sounds great and it's perfectly optimized for the show that you're trying to do i agree it shouldn't be like that at all like th th it was the best possible environment for us to actually test the show I agree. and actually figure out how to evolve the show and like really kind of like earn our stripes and show that we we can do it and like how cool for us that for us like the venues that just happen to not be totally optimized to what we were trying to do are actually themselves like legendary venues, venues. you know, like legendary, legendary comedy clubs. And I, I feel like, yeah, like I, I, I mentioned the sound system or whatever. It's, you know, there's no subs in there or whatever. But um, I still feel super grateful that like I got to perform in those spaces Facts. and that we were even like, you know, let up in there. Like yeah, and, and we could yeah. do our thing on those stages where like legends have performed, you know, and, <laughs> and these are rooms that that um, people work their whole life to, to hopefully get an opportunity to be on those stages. So. You it's, know, it's, it's so true. It's, it's, so it's true. dope, man. It's the way that it that it all worked out. It's never how you think it's gonna go. Ever. It Improv, always takes baby. its own. It always takes its own route. But uh, I think it's pretty cool how we how we got this thing going, this, dog. This guy, man. This hey. guy. This guy. Uh, well, dope, man. So we had some 
members of the community submit some freestyle videos. I think Ooh. we're gonna react to one if you're down. Okay, man. I'm down for this. Let's do this. Let's, let's get it. This. Yeah, yeah let's oh, pull yeah. one up. Yeah, what do we got? Um, I believe this is from. Let's see. Thrown Genji. Throwed Genji. Oh Throwed hell Genji. yeah! Yep, yep. I know this guy. This dude is dope. He uh he's been uh, down with the community for a long time. I think he was out at the Boston show. Oh hell yeah! Um, so, hell yeah! Let's check it out. Without further ado, straight freestyle. Thank you, Harry Mack, for the opportunity. Uh. Let's go in, yo. Yeah, yeah. Just thinking about what's important. Get the green like a forest. Get the beat, then I scorch it. I'll be shooting like Jordan. Every day, yo, I get it in. Thanking y'all just for listening. That my shine, I be glistening. I'm living just like a citizen. I'm paying my taxes, but I'm working on my craft and my passion. Got me living in a whole different habitats then. Everything I spit tight from day into the midnight. I gotta get my shit right when I'm using the windpipe to rip mics. Say nobody stopping me. I'm snapping like photography every time that I'm on the beats. Honestly, I'm tired of apologies. I gotta really show myself every time I flow it helps. I'm feeling so gold as well. You know I'm shining every time I get it done. When I'm spitting freestyles like I got a poison tongue. They might be avoiding them, but you know it's getting intense. Yo, I gotta pay the rent, cause it's at my own expense. Facts. Yo, he did his thing. That was uh, fine. He smoked that. Hell he yeah. smoked that. He smoked that. Hell yeah, dude. I love. I love the the flow state with with freestylers where where especially being able to see the words on screen. You do this really well. Is where you the person seeing the word is probably trying to predict how yeah. you're going to get to that. Yeah, and keeping everyone on the edge of your sh of your seat. Yeah, like figuring out creative more creative ways to get to the word yeah it's always a fun process for me to watch so he went crazy on that definitely um the setups were, were really clean a lot of pockets the yeah. bars were there i'm, I'm rocking with them oh yeah, boy yeah, no, that, was, that was yo throw genji gets down man i definitely. like this definitely. i like this and i first heard him freestyle like like a, a couple years back during the pandemic on like one of the happy hour streams virtually oh. um he came on and threw me some words and then he was like yo i freestyle too um and and he did his thing but it's been cool to see his growth too from then mm. to now um because yeah the setup punchline shit the leading up to the target word was on point i liked how in the beginning too it was like it was like two rhyming words to the bar yep yep, yep you know yep, yep. so it was really like grab the mic and scorch it never gonna forfeit da -da 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 -da, getting green like a forest, forest. and like packing in the rhymes yep. like that is dope also but my favorite part though um there was one moment where I, my my spidey sense and my interpretation of it and uh I, I don't know i'm not throw genji so i'm not inside of his mind when he's doing it but there was one part where it was like he he barely made it yep. like the the rhyme barely connected yep. he was like reaching, reaching the, yeah, for, yeah. The, for, for like a rhyme that would connect multisyllabically, and i saw his eyes like kind of reach for it and, and he grabbed something that, and it just worked yeah, but it, but yeah. it kind of it was a stretch in terms of if it made sense or not it was one of those moments mm. where you're like okay 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 like i'm seeing what you're doing i think we're gonna work on this together and make it work and then right after that he came in ferocious yeah, 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 and yeah, hard yeah, right hard. so it's like after that i wouldn't even call it a mistake because it wasn't it wasn't a mistake but it's like as a freestyler i recognize that moment where it's like you don't it's not exactly what you wanted, wanted to do yeah, yeah. you know you lost control of it for a split second almost and then you just come back in snapping and and i i just love that man i love that um energy of like if you I love that if you feel like you're about to make a mistake you you, you don't get sheepish or be like oh man mm. whatever you come back in twice as hard as before and, and from that moment on he was he was just slaying so. he went crazy that's interesting yeah. uh, I, I felt that energy wise exactly everything you're saying and yeah. i think that, that is such a that's a professional move right there man yeah big fan of that that's the that's the only option man when, when you're when you're doing it live bro you you know you uh you keep the mistakes if there are any, and you come back in twice as hard when you're recovering from it. But uh, but I wouldn't even say he made any mistakes, man. That shit was clean. Mm. Shout out to Throw Genji. Facts by Mac. Let's go, hey, man. Let's, let's go. Man. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> that uh, was by sick. the way, y'all, if you want to submit your freestyles to all the aspiring MCs out there, y'all know what to do, man. You just got to hit up the website, which is going to be shown on the screen momentarily. But I think I know what it is. I think it is harrymacofficial.com slash flow state pod. Nailed it. Nailed hey, it. Let's go. The monitor always goes down at the crucial moment. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but that was a test for me. So, yeah, all the MCs out there, man. Um, and, you know, obviously, Throw Genji has been putting in the, the, the work for a while. So Trust he's got that. some real solid technique already built up. But don't be discouraged if you're earlier in your journey. You know, um, wherever you're at in your journey, I'm, I'm, I'm down to give some feedback and, and check in with y'all and see if I can 
hopefully be, uh, you know, constructive and helpful. So yeah. uh, send those freestyles in, man. HarryMacOfficial.com slash pod. I'm sure we'll have the link in the description, assuming there's a description. So <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so check that out as well. Um, Dope. Jazz, so honored to have had you on here as my thank first guest man thank you for having me my friend so blessed to be able to work with you, bro. <laughs> that, was, that was formal but yo and, and congrats on the journey as well man super thank excited you, to see where the podcast goes Hell yeah. the illustrious guest you're gonna have on here man yes. super stoked for this journey for you my man 100 percent, man i'm so glad you're a part of it bro been incredible to build with you man and this is just the beginning um all right we heard some freestyles I want to close this show out the way I know how. And uh, today is special because we got jazz in the building. And we actually have an instrumental that you produced Hell yeah. on deck for me to close out with the freestyle, man. Should we hit this? Let's do this, man. By the way, what's up with this beat, man? Because I know you're working on some different, uh, you know, different modes and different ways of cooking up. Yeah. Um, what's what's up with this beat? What's your what's your uh, your vibe with this? Oh, uh, oh man, great great question. So you know, uh, as as someone who likes to cook now and be in the kitchen, yes, I created this concept of you know, it was actually beats to make food to initially. Um, mm. There's no words. It's just soul samples chopped up. Feels yeah. good to make you know brunch on a Sunday uh, Sunday morning. Yeah. Um, and so I'm gonna put start putting out these beat packs. Uh, beats to freestyle too, man. Soul sample, a lot hey. of chops. Some might have drums, some might not have drums. But ideally, just to throw on, if you like to flow, if you can't flow, keep it in your head. But it's all, <laughs> but it's all to have fun and practice in the sake of good music. Hell yeah, oh, yeah. that's dope. That's dope. I love it. Uh, so keep your eyes and ears out, man, for beats to freestyle too. And uh, we're gonna have some fun with this, man. Let's, Let's do it, it, man. Hell yeah. Cue it up, Harry. It's all yours. All right, uh, we rolling. You know what it is. Sam, you got that beat? I got you. Let's go. Uh. Hey. Uh. We come alive from the Flow State Podcast. Let's go. The boy Sir Jazz, H Mac in the building. You know what it is, man. Let's go. Flow State about to be activated. Woo. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Hey, Sir Jazz on the beat, come on, yeah, come on, yeah, come on, uh H-Mac, I'ma snap with the heat, locked in with the homie Sir Jazz on the beat, uh We get that real, not that wannabe love, been tearing up mics since we was in them comedy clubs, yeah Spitting with passion, rappers got me laughing, never gonna cash in, steady taking action Never faking, I'm creating on my true route, interviewing the game like when I'm on this blue couch Hey yo, we bout to get the properest info, Ever since we started, we've been dropping shit that been dope. They know the daily drive them silly. Every flow worth the billy. I'm the goat though. Blow your mind with dope flows. H Mac, take it further on the platter. I'ma serve you every bar that I deliver. Straight up murder. Uh, yeah. Hey yo, I'm known for the live flipping. I'm turning haters into buttermilk fried chicken. Yeah, my man's in the kitchen cooking up. Hey yo, honestly, I feel we don't get booked enough. A hundred shows, man, we just scratching the surface. Put us on bigger stages. Live that passionate purpose. Uh, every time. I rhyme, I prove to y'all my flow's cold Matter of fact, let's run it back at the Rose Bowl uh. But this time, we bout to fill in all the seats I be killing all the beats, man, I'm really going deep Oceanic with the rhythm, peep the vision I'm displaying, real with the bars, never playing On every rap conversation, y'all know Mac got a weigh in All up at the top, that's where we staying Yeah, h Mac, man, you know I catch more than rack I make the audience vibrate like 4DX uh. Yeah, I entirely do harm Spit so much flame, I'm putting off the fire Fire alarm, I know the deal, that's for real, man, we don't ever slip Shouts to Jazz, that's my DJ and he's fully equipped uh, When it comes to musical knowledge, he don't stop, give him props Inherited that taste from his pops, so it's genetic, running in the family Every time he drops a beat, I know it's straight insanity This is from the classic project that is yet to drop Beast of freestyle too, I catch wreck and mop the whole game up Insane stuff, I flame up the beat though This shit is basic for me like a free throw Matter of fact, lay up, it's easy, I really Bam. Off of the backboard on this beat, I'll be down We make it pop, y'all know they feel the God's wrath I had to bring it to you live on the podcast Yeah, we just scratched the surface with the heat Harry Mack off the top, Sir Jazz on the beat, let's go <laughs> Yo, you killed that, dog. That beat goes crazy yeah, You killed that, that man, another one, another one Let's go, let's go 
Oh, uh, so fire, man. So fire. Such a joy to have you on here, bro. Such a joy yeah, to be able you. to thank you. not only work with you, but to be able to consider you one of my closest friends, man. Oh my and God. it's a family thing, bro. After Absolutely. after 150 flights and like 90 Airbnbs, 90 shows, something like that. Uh, it really is a family thing, man. And, and like I said, you light up every room you go in, bro. So appreciate, appreciate your you, energy, man. man. Yeah, thank you for having me on board. Shout out to the team. Yes, sir. Hey, Mac, GOAT, genuine dude. One of my closest friends, man. Can't wait to see this journey, man. Like, you Let's deserve all the flowers, my guy. Thank Let's you, bro. Just keep it going. Just keep it going. You already know.